this out. I asked for a rainbow, and look what I get. Hmm, well, I guess it is a rainbow. See the raindrops? Rain bow? Hmm, not exactly what I was after. Now, I've heard at the end of a rainbow you can find a pot of gold. Imagine that, a pot of gold. <sighs> I wonder if it's real. Mind you, if the pot of gold isn't real, I know a rainbow is, they're as real as thunder and lightning. Hey, where does a rainbow come from, hmm? Um, sky? Rain? Well, a rainbow comes from rain and sun from the sky. Rain? The sky? When the rain, when, it, when, when the rain comes down after it. And the sun taking the rain. Hey, some good ideas there. But how about this? What if the sky is grey and it's rainy for such a long time that we need some colour to cheer us up? So maybe somebody dials the rainbow hotline and orders one. Mm. But you know, sometimes I'm singing in the rain, so what's going on up there? <coughs> Can you see all the colours in the order they're in? It's hard to tell where they begin and where they end. But maybe you can spot the red. It's sort of pushing in there by the orange. And the orange is nudging into the yellow. And the yellow's saying, don't push me, I'm turning green. And the green's becoming blue. And the blue sort of turns indigo and then violet. Violet's lucky though, it's only getting pushed in from one side. You know something? Those colors never change places. Mm -hmm. They stay the same all the time. And that really brings us to our stickiest, or maybe it's our drippiest question of all. How did the colours get there? More than 300 years ago, a young man called Isaac Newton was doing some experiments. He shut himself into a dark, dark room and started studying the small amounts of light which were streaming in when he altered the shutters on his windows. He opened the shutters just an incy wincy crack and he let in a beam of white light. Well, that's the light that the sun produces, which is scattered around as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. So the light came in here, and Newton placed a triangular prism in its way. I say, this is a prism. It's a cool triangular-shaped thing with five transparent sides. Now, when white light hits something like a prism, does it turn around and go home? I don't think so. Oh, no. It goes straight through and out the other side, and what you get is not white light. Oh, no. What you get is a whole spectrum of colours. <laughs> a spectrum of colours means the full range of colours that you can see in a rainbow. It's a pretty awesome sight. When you're looking at a spectrum, you're seeing all the different colours that make up a beam of white light. I am Miss White Light. I am very dull and boring. But watch what happens when I tango with this raindrop. I will become beautiful. See? Hey, let's see if I can make my own rainbow. I've got everything set up already. I've got a glass bowl with some water in it. I've got a mirror. There's a piece of black card with a slit cut in it and a piece of white card in front of it. Behind the black card, I have a desk lamp. And the light from the desk lamp is going to shine through this slit down into the mirror. Only there's a bit too much light at the moment, so lights please. Now it's a bit tricky to see, so I think I'll show you this way. If the white light is switched on, and directed through this slit toward the water and the mirror, something happens to the white light. You can't actually see anything happening to that beam of white light, can you? Well, that's the magic of it. By passing the white light through a prism or through water like this, the light is bent and broken up into the different colours that make up white light. Cool, huh? Well, you know, Isaac Newton did all the hard work for us. His experiments prove that all those cool colours come from white light. And what the water does is bend the white light and split it up into different wavelengths. And those wavelengths have nothing to do with the sea. Trust me. 
OK, the sea is made up of water waves, and the light is made up of waves too, only these waves are waves of electromagnetic radiation. White light from the sun is a mixture of different wavelengths. You know, you only get to see a rainbow when you're playing piggy in the middle, but with this game, you don't use a ball. You have to be piggy in the middle between the sun and some raindrops. You need the sun behind you and the raindrops in front. And what happens is the sun fires off rays of light. And those rays of light get bent by water drops. And you have to have the water droplets, otherwise you don't get a rainbow. The sun is behind you, the raindrops are in front, and you see a beautiful rainbow. Right, you need sunlight and water. Well, we've got plenty of sunlight, we just need the water. And it doesn't look like it's going to rain for ages. But I do have a garden hose. Here we go, sunlight and water. Can you see a rainbow? Well, keep moving around. When the sun's right behind you and the water's in front, you should be able to see a rainbow. Can you see it? Keep moving. Can you see it now? Yeah. Or maybe next time you're out in the garden and you've got the garden hose going and the sun behind you, you might just see a rainbow. Oh, and it can help if the sun's low in the sky too. It helps to see those colours more clearly, like the red and the orange and the yellow and the green and the blue and the indigo and the violet. And maybe next time you see a rainbow, you could time it and see how long it lasts for. So how do your eyes see all those different colours? Hmm? Well, the whole spectrum of colours are reflected back to your eyes in the shape of an arc. And you know what? You can see a rainbow anywhere in the whole wide world. All you've got to do is have the sun behind you and the rain in front. So that means I could run around the world and find that pot of gold. <sighs> or I could just stay here and play piggy in the middle with the sun behind me and the rain in front. You know, there's a chance that nobody's ever dug deep enough for that pot of gold, so I'm going to do it. And when I find it, I'm going to buy myself a huge present. Oh, don't you hate that? Every time you chase a rainbow, it moves and it never seems to touch the ground. If you'd like information about this program, or if you have questions you'd like answered, you can write to us at Susie's World, PO Box 34307, Birkenhead, Auckland, or head to the website, www.susie.co.nz. You know, it says here, if you're ever lucky enough to see a rainbow from an aeroplane, you'll see an amazing sight. Instead of a semi-circular arc, you'll see a full circle rainbow. Wow! Hey, imagine what that'll do to the old pot of gold at the end of the rainbow story. Hmm? See you later. <laughs> what you get is a whole spectrum of colours. <laughs> with a slit cut in it and a piece of white card in front of it. Now behind the black... Can you see a rainbow? Oh, we'll keep moving around and... Sorry. Settle. This program was brought to you by New Zealand On Air.